everyone, this is Jean from Happy Indulgence and I'm here to recap the nine books that I read during April. This was a pretty good reading month because most of the books I read were four stars. There was only one that was five stars and one that was two stars. As you guys who watch my monthly recap will know, I go from the highest rated books to the lowest rated. So let's begin. The first book I read is Morningstar and I absolutely loved it. Morningstar is a conclusion to the Red Rising trilogy. It's about Darrow, which is a lonely miner. He infiltrates the hierarchies of society and becomes a gold. And then from there on, he incites a revolution throughout the solar system. He loved Greco-Roman war and futuristic technology. This one's set in space and it's absolutely fantastic. Now, each of the books gets more and more epic. And after the massive cliffhanger in Golden Sun, I'm not going to go through any spoilers at all, but I wondered how Morningstar was going to fare because I knew there would be a lot of scope to cover in this book. I was kind of glad for the slow beginning because it slowly uh, ramps up Darrow as he makes political alliances, as he revisits characters, and as it ties up a lot of loose ends, and then it goes into this massive nuclear technological war between the solar systems, the spaceships, and it's absolutely exciting and exhilarating. And oh my gosh, even in its last pages, I, I, my heart was just pounding so fast because I didn't know which way it was going to go. As you know, at the end of trilogies, authors usually like to break our hearts and I cried so much in Morningstar during a character death. But it was a character death that was done really, really well. The characters mourn them, they become immortalized through their actions. You know, I just thought it gave us the closure that we needed. There's also lots of really massive shocks and revelations. You're going to feel so much in Morningstar. I gave this five stars. The first book was Red Rising, and if you love technological warfare and mix between sci-fi and fantasy, this series I really recommend. So pick it up, guys. I also read The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, which is a contemporary summer romance. And I thought this was a really adorable book. This is the review copy, so you can see the little pug in the corner. It is about dog walking. So the character Andy, she's a senator's daughter. Her whole life she's been really controlled and restricted in what she can do and say. One summer, she finds all her plans go out the window when her father's reputation goes down the drain. And she finds herself dog walking while hanging out with her three best friends. And she also encounters a, an author called Clark. And it's a really cute romance because Clark is a beta male. Like, he's really insightful. He's really deep. You know, he isn't a sporty or outgoing person. But he looks for depth in people. And he's an introvert as well. I really liked how he connected with Andy throughout the story. Andy and her three best friends really felt the affinity within the group. And how they chat with each other. They each have their quirks. I haven't read a book that featured multiple best friends before. It kind of reminded me a little of Pretty Little Liars, but it felt really realistic. And last but not least, I really enjoyed Andy's development with her father as they find for the first time they have to uh, spend some time together over summer. Andy obviously has a lot of feelings to work out with her father being there and being an absent parent her whole life. Overall, I really love the unexpected everything. I gave it four stars and it's a really cute, realistic and relatable summer romance. I also read The Things I Didn't Say by Kylie Fornazia. Kylie's a really lovely Aussie author and this book is about an anxiety condition called selective mutism. I didn't know much about selective mutism. I know it's where people can't speak in certain situations and I always linked it back to post-traumatic stress disorder. But this book actually shows us that that's actually not the case and some people are just predisposed to this condition. So Piper starts a new school and she falls in love with a popular guy called Wes. Although there's a bit of insta-love, it's actually a really meaningful relationship because Piper can't speak at all. She never speaks a word to Wes, 
but somehow they develop a deep emotional connection. Wes is just such a really understanding guy. It made me realize that popular people have a stigma as well. He He's really good at sport, but he doesn't want to become a lawyer. He doesn't want a football scholarship. He just wants to be a chef. This book was great for busting those sorts of stigmas. I did think that the personalities could have been developed a bit more and that I wanted some concluding thoughts on selective mutism. It felt realistic, but I wanted to know what prompted the change in Piper. But that's actually real life. Sometimes there's just no answers. So I gave this one four stars. I got two books from the library this month, which is Hidden Bodies by Carolyn Kepneys and Marked in Flesh by Anne Bishop. Both of them were four star reads for me and sequels that I was really looking forward to. So Hidden Bodies features a psychotic stalker called Joe and he's one of my favorite antagonists. His point of view is just so sarcastic and matter of fact and it's really hilarious. This one features Joe in Hollywood. It's as over the top as it sounds. Joe just felt a bit overpowered at times where he got frustrated at someone because they were being pompous or douchey and he just kills them. And it's like he has no direction at, at all because he he's there to look for a girl that betrayed him but then he gets sucked up into script writing, into filmmaking and he falls in love with a girl called Love. I mean how ridiculous is that? But it's ridiculous on purpose and it's absolutely hilarious, witty and entertaining. I gave this one four stars as well. I did think the first book, You, was a lot better than this one but it was still a great treat reading from Joe's perspective. So Marked in Flesh is the fourth book in the Other series which is an adult urban fantasy series set around monsters called the Others. They're also called Terra in Indigene. These monsters actually want to eat humans and it's hilarious because who would have thought you have so many vampires and zombies and all of that and how do they fall in love with humans when they're actually food to them? So the others is based around that concept and Meg is a blood prophet who needs to cut and she reveals prophecies and the fourth book in this series really opens up the world here with lots of different communities. The humans first and last movement who are after the others and they want to wipe them out and take back the world for their own. But there's also humans who have learned to coexist with them such as Meg in the lakeside courtyard. Meg and Simon are the cutest couple ever. Simon's a terra indigene himself but he's a wolf and he can shift between a wolf and a human. It was absolutely worth the wait. It's a massive slow burn, but there's a really cute and adorable moment in this one. So I gave Marked in Flesh four stars. The first book is called Written in Red, and I love this series. Now onto my three star reads. The Girl from Everywhere by Heidi Halig. The time travel rules aren't really set out here. They're basically on a time traveling ship and as long as they hold the map with coordinates, they can go anywhere, anytime, even fictional worlds and that was a really interesting aspect in The Girl of Everywhere. But most of the place where it's set in is in the 1800s Hawaii and it features a beautiful tropical lush descriptive setting. I was a bit disappointed because the start of the book featured lots of time travel and it was really exciting but then the book really stalls when they get to Hawaii. I think this book featured way too many different elements like you've got Nix's dad who's looking after his long lost love so he can travel back in time to find her. You've got them looking for a map to that time and then you've got Nyx who flips around the two love interests. She's got her best friend Kashmir which is the clear winner by the way and then this super boring guy called Blake who's as bland as a doorknob and she flits between the two throughout the book. She kisses both boys. One of them goes away for a while and then he comes back and you just know it's going to drag on throughout the series which is just really frustrating. It felt really unstructured and there were just so many messy elements that it got way too confusing after a while and a bit frustrating at times. For some reason there's Chinese terracotta soldiers in there as well. I just didn't know how it all fit in. I ended up giving this book three stars. 
I think it's more for lovers of historical fiction because the time travel and the fantasy elements were a bit messy in this one. I also read Not If I See You First by Eric Lindstrom. This one was a pretty quick read about Parker who is a blind girl. Parker's really sarcastic, she's a really bitter character who's really angry because she's lost her sight for, and her parents from a car accident. Although it was refreshing to read from someone who was disabled but who had that sort of personality, who wasn't meek and wanted help all the time, I found some of her behaviour pretty difficult to swallow at times. She has all these un unwritten rules that people have to follow in order to get on her good side and is, she's just really prickly to people who misunderstand her or who are just trying to be nice to her. Uh, there is a central romance in here which I found was done well but Parker annoyed me a lot. I ended up giving this 3 stars because it's interesting to read a book from a blind character's point of view even though the character wasn't my favourite. The last book I read is Grooming the Enemy by David Metzenthin. This is another Aussie YA read and it's about Johnny who's a returning soldier after the Vietnam War. I don't know where the YA part comes in because Johnny doesn't feel like a teen character at all. Uh, he's dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. As he comes back, he's dreaming about a Vietnamese soldier who was his enemy at the time. I don't know whether Khan was real or fictional, but it jumps around a lot. Uh, it meshes the past and the present a lot and it jumps a lot between the chapters and I found it really confusing to follow at times. And Johnny, I didn't really get a good feel for him either. But on the other hand, this is one of the most realistic war books that I've ever read. It was really confronting seeing what the soldiers have to go through and the horrors that they witness while on the battlefield. Because it was so confusing and I didn't get a good feel for the characters, I ended up giving this two stars. These are the nine books that I read during April. I hope you find a book that you enjoy. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next month. Bye!